Hi, so I'm Ruby and I'm a student at the University of Edinburgh, currently studying computer science, but I've been doing an internship that I did all summer and I'm now doing one day a week um, called Which Finder General Data Visualization. So I'm working on this project, the map of the case, which is in Scotland. Um, so I'll just tell you a bit about the project. So Professor Julian Goodyear and um, three other historians in the early 2000s created the survey of Scottish witchcraft which we've heard about um, so far, um, which is a database which collects all the information of all the accused witches in Scotland between the years 1563 and 1736. So it has information on over 3,000 accused witches and it has so much information with over 300 fields across um, 30 databases. So it's a really valuable resource that um, so many people use. Like when you talk about anyone that kind of I just like puts together exhibitions, writes books, um, I've talked to people that have podcasts which as well. They all like they all use this resource so much. Um, so it's yeah, so important. Um, so then um here in with me students and residents and students then data science um for study. And they uploaded all this data onto Wikidata, which is a sister project to Wikipedia, and um, which is open link data, which is machine readable. Um, so once this was all uploaded onto Wikidata, it makes it really easy to visualise with, and it became apparent that like, we could make something a more kind of interactive and engaging way, engaging way to present this data, um, by finding the coordinates of the locations where these witches resided. So this is the website here. So that's the link if you want to look at it. I don't know if you've looked at it before. Um, so like it's an interactive map. You can zoom in, and then what kind of these witches appear and you can click on them, read their more information about them, their names and um, where they lived and lots of other information. So um, this project started in 2019 when Emma Carroll, who was a geography student at the uni as well, um, worked on locating all the residences of the witches, of the case witches. Um, so, Obviously, this was centuries ago, so a lot of the place names have changed. So it wasn't just a simple task of like looking up the place names and finding them. She had to look through lots of historical maps, place name records, gazettes, and um, historical records to try find where these places were, and then find the coordinates. And then she uploaded these to Wikidata, which then allowed the data to be queried and then put on the map that we can see here. Um, with their residents. And this was supported by Richard Lawson, who basically created the website. Um, and he's supported all the interns since as well from June 2019 to October 2023, where he like sadly passed away suddenly. Um, but he really has been so such a huge part of this project, creating the website and was such just so generous with the time and supporting me and the other interns um, that have worked on this project. So yeah. Emma Carroll did the kind of main start part of the work in finding all the locations, which is the basis of the project. But then other interns, including me, have worked on it since. So Maggie Lynn um, added a lot more information to Wikidata, including information about the trials and investigations. And she worked along with Joseph, um, who was the open source um, developer who embedded all her websites and made the website more usable and accessible as well and improved the interface. Then Claire Panel at the start of this year worked one day a week and she created like a process for quality assuring the data. So as the data has been uploaded to Wikidata, like Wikipedia, Wikidata can be edited by anyone. So this is really important because it doesn't mean that data can be updated. Um, to allow it to become more accurate, but also means things can change. So Claire um, created the process of reading in the data from the survey and Wikidata to compare it so we can see where the changes have been made and check that they're um, historically accurate. And um, Julian helped with this also um, as we go on to editing regularly. Um, for its expertise. So I and started and some continued the quality assurance work, but I've also been working um, on this new updated version of the website, which Maggie, so Maggie's visualizations um, aren't on the current version of the website yet. So I've been working on trying to get that ready so that all these new visualizations and features um, can be released into version two of the website. 
um, and adding some major features myself. So I'll show you what kind of some of the new things on the website are. So it has a new interface before the filters now on the side, it's a bit more spaced out and and this yeah, it's just kind of improved how you did this up. Um, and then there's some new features as well. So there's now a timeline you can either um, select panic periods or non-panic periods. So they're preset time sets or you can customize it yourself. And this kind of allows you to see how um, the spread of the witch, like the accusations throughout the years. Um, so it's a kind of new interesting way to explore the period. And then um, there's also a new page, which is a Histopedia timeline search, uh, where the accused witches appear in order of their um, trials. And then you can click on these and then it can show you it links to the survey, but also the Wikipedia pages. And the Wikipedia pages are a good way to like share the individual stories and get more of the kind of details. Like it can it just emphasizes kind of actually how horrifying find lots of the individual stories work. And um, because we're looking at the math stuff, you see them all, but like reading the individual stories is often where like you kind of learn how horrific it was. And then here you can search by name as well, filtered by gender, age, um, and things like that as well. Then there is, with the data that Maggie uploaded to Wikidata as well, you can now filter with this on the website as well. Before it was just gender, occupation and social class. Now we have new ones, case characteristics, pact with devil, property damage, meeting places and meeting information. Um, so here's an example, that's the different packs with the devil. So you can see all the different and learn a lot more about what these women and men were accused of. And then there's some other new features. This was a trial mentions network graph and you can explore like who mentioned who in the trials and see how it spread through um, the years. And then there's a historic map here, features where we can see it um, presented on a map, which is closer to the time of the accusations and um, with more similar place names. And then a contact form as well, because obviously not got all the information right as the place name. So we've had been contacted by quite a few people being like, we actually think they lived here. And um, so this allows us to constantly improve the website. But it's also you get lots of positive feedback. Like the, the site's been visited by like hundreds of thousands of people. So it's nice hearing about the people that enjoy using it as well. Um, and then we're also, there's some new things we're gonna currently add before we release version two, like a map of memorials, because lots of local communities have kind of um, create things to try honour and remember the women that were killed and um, so it's kind of a nice way to share what lots of communities have done and um, let people like know, let them know what's nearby to them and stuff because it's something that's a lot of interest to people right now. So yeah that's me if anyone has any questions on me. Can I just ask you so oh sorry sorry yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. the map itself when you click on the like individual witches um yeah i'll give it okay so and then like if you so for them some of them it has like more information about like the trials and, yeah so if there's no more information doesn't mean that there is just no records of yeah when there's no more information it's like the records one yeah then some of the witch the case which is like nothing was reported about them also how do you know about them because um, there were still like the trials, a Julian point, so there's a better mm. chance of this, but the trials were recorded, but just not information about oh. them. So, like some of them, their names weren't even recorded. It was just like three women, like, so that's like, it was so impersonal. Sometimes. Do they say like three women from somewhere? Or yeah, from more? Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just, just to focus, just to add, add a little bit to that. Um, Probably the largest single number of, of all those, which is what we know about them, is we've got a central record of an order to hold a trial. Mm. And so um, so a trial should be held of this named person, or sometimes you get a list of names, um, and there'll be a place and there'll be a date. Was that trial held? Uh. Probably. You know, well, we don't have a record of the actual trial. Were they convicted? Probably, but again, we're not sure. Uh, so the, there's um, uh, a lot of stuff that we don't know, but uh, 
Um, but the reason we can do that is because we've got that central register that gives us names, places, dates. But it's not always complete because, as Ruby says, sometimes you know, the, the, you know, we've just got thing which is there's quite a lot of, you know, um, unknown number. Do you have for some of the widgets? Is there like no name? Yeah, there is some, like no name tags or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, sometimes you just got to a group of those we don't know how many there were. That's only yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah. But, and so, so the overall statistics are mm -hmm. you know imprecise. Yeah. So we, we've added records to Histropedia about all the un, unknown. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Or the, the sometimes there's like three witches. That's all that's, that that was recorded in the survey. Three unknown witches, or I think that the, the play print recently sort of uh, was not very. They they were sort of inspired because there was an entry in the survey I think about that said sundry witches. Yeah, and the, the, they sort of like well let's let's they were people. You know the word sundry is you know you know not a fitting memorial to them in some way so yeah we've tried to add the unnamed cases as well and it's probably going to be a quite a technical technical question for the group so you've got you're pulling in data from lots of different sources so wiki data uh, you said about the the memorials is that in an existing data set or was it a distinct data set no. We're having to research. We're researching that currently and uploading them to Wikidata, yeah. so we'll tell that from Wikidata. Um, you're using OpenStreetMap as your base layer there. Yeah. Are you getting any data from OpenStreetMap on memorials? Um, no, well, we're not using that currently. No. I'll email you after. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're sort of like reaching out to people as well. They're, they're sort of, they've been emailing me and uh, D, uh, DMing me on Twitter with images that they've taken off a local memorial to them and there's yeah. you know more recent memorials coming up all the time like one in Peebles and one in Mid Calder recently as well um, and we're, we're just trying to sort of like make sure that we we have a record of them and to, to make people aware of them and so that we have a map of places to visit. I'm also liaising with Julian about a 23 stop walking tour of Edinburgh about places in Edinburgh that have connections with the accusers or the Lord Advocates or, uh, or you know, but also the accused themselves. I'll email you both. Yeah. We're trying to sort of like do just do justice in, in all these ways, these, these different ways. Um, I just think it's amazing that all this work is coming together and it's great to see it. I was wondering about the exhibition, which I think is amazing, showing the detail of the words that are used and the challenging uh, situations that these women mainly found themselves in. And I just wondered, how does that feeling of, you know, being accused and all these sort of things said about them or, or confessed to, how is that going to feed into this archive so that when the exhibition's toured round and round and hopefully gets a permanent home, that, that there's a link between the two. I don't know if that's planned or something yeah, that needs to happen. And we can include. Well, we we're going to add like a further reading page, but it would be nice also to put the kind of other things so that people can go see the exhibition. Kind of on and let me get also. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question. Actually, you were just also on the page itself, and you were talking. There was like a panic period and non-panic yeah. period. What is that? <laughs> I have enjoyed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. The, the, um, the, the, the timeline of number of accusations. Um, goes sort of like this. <laughs> so uh, you suddenly see huge jumps in numbers of accusations, um, and um, that's when they're, they're most intense. And nobody's ever really run the numbers, and the numbers are not very crunchable. But you know, the five biggest panics may well have been more than half of all the, the, the witches, and altogether they would only come to. Um, sort of five or six years out of the, you know, um, 870 odd that the Witchcraft Act was in force. So, uh, yeah, those panic periods look very different from the ones the panic periods. But those are sort of national panics. You also sometimes get local panics that 
um, that don't necessarily make such a blip on the national figures, or, or you get panics that don't necessarily lead to any executions, like the one in Fitton Wien. No one was executed, somebody died in prison. There's still a local panic. Is there like a reason for these periods occurring, like historical reasons, or I don't know, some diseases, I don't know, spreading or something? Or... Um, several of them you can link to the establishment of a new regime. Mm. Um, but that's not the, you know, the, the trouble with witchcraft is that if you start producing one explanation, it, it doesn't, never fits all of them. Mm. You know, uh, I, I, the, the, um, I haven't got time to go into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. that's, 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 I was just wondering, so is there any kind of measure of quality of the data you receive? Like, do you have like an individual kind of score for, you know, lower quality evidence, higher quality evidence or not necessarily? I mean, we're using the data from the survey primarily. Okay. So like, but oh, it's all high quality. None of it is missing. Yeah. It's, yeah we, there's just stuff yeah. that we don't know. Yeah. Okay. 